the San Antonio Spurs are sitting at 23 and 36 heading into the all-star break. And it's a very crucial point for the Spurs right now because they can either go in either direction, head to the playoff race and try to get into that play in or stay where we're at stay at the bottom of the Western Conference and try to secure a top draft pick. It can go either way because in the playoff race right now, you got teams like Little Acres, the Clippers, Portland, who are all kind of iffy, right? We don't really know which direction they're going to go. And then you got teams below the playoff race like New Orleans, Sacramento, and the Spurs, who are just only two to five games behind those spots in the Western Conference. Which direction is best for the San Antonio Spurs? That's the big question. So I threw it to my guys over there at Alamo City Limits Podcast. Noah Magaro George and Damian Bartonic to let me know what they think is best for this organization right now. Take it away, Noah. What's going on, Spurs fans? It's your co host of Alamo City Limits, Noah Magaro George, and my boy Damian Bartonic. What would be more beneficial for the San Antonio Spurs? Would it be making this plan, you know, really pushing to get there for the second straight year in a row, or maybe aiming for a top five pick? Yeah, no, I think for me it's definitely the pick. Uh, I understand the plan for development reasons and stuff like that, and I would be a little bit more for that if they had that centerpiece already on the roster. But considering that they don't, I think they need to have that pick, man. Right, right now, because you know, for better or for worse, this is going to be your ceiling, in my opinion, with a team that's just like this. So we can find out, we, you know, we can find this out and be at this level every year. You know, speaking from the first perspective, we can be right here, you know, next season if you wanted to. You know what I mean? But I think getting that pick and actually starting to build something uh, worth substance, especially getting back to you know the winning Spurs ways, I think that pick is much more important than whatever playing you could imagine. You know, the San Antonio Spurs, they were able to get that protected pick from the Celtics, the protected pick from the Toronto Raptors. Look, those picks are 20 and 18 as it stands today, and it looks like the Spurs have the seventh worst record in the NBA. Maybe they get a little bit better. Maybe they're a little bit worse. But that's not good enough to go get you a foundational player. Right, we're looking at Paolo Banchero. We're looking at Chet Holmgren. We're looking at even Jabari Smith Jr., Jaden Ivey, and Shaden Sharp. Those guys are going to go in the top five. So if you end up with the seventh pick... It's not the end of the world. You have the 7th pick, the 20th pick, the 18th pick. You can trade those and potentially move up. Who knows what teams are going to end up at the very top of this draft? Who knows who they're going to value in terms of positions? You know, the front court positions, people have sort of moved away from them, and it's really guard-heavy, and you want ball handlers. And look, if you're the Spurs, you have an opportunity to go get DeJounte Murray help. He's established himself as an all-star, and now you're in a position where you can trade up, or you can even trade those picks to maybe go get a disgruntled star. Now, the latter, I think, is probably less realistic. You see those disgruntled stars trying to get to bigger markets. Respectfully, San Antonio is not that. We love San Antonio. You know, the 210 is home. It's a great city, but I don't think NBA players see it the same way. So if you can go get yourself a young guy, a foundational piece, like any one of those five guys that I mentioned at the start, you put them next to DeJounte, Keldon, Devin Vassell, Josh Primo, maybe Lonnie Walker sticks around. Who knows what Zach Collins is going to do? Yaka Pertle is solid. You have yourself potentially something special. Maybe not in year one, maybe not in year two, but your outlook looks so much better in three, four years. So I understand fans. They want to get back to the playoffs. They want to have a chance to get in there through the plan. But being in the plan, that gets you role players usually. You're going to end up with the 12th pick, the 13th pick, the 14th pick, and yes, there are Devin Bookers and Giannis Antetokounmpo's and, and Nikola Jokic's, but those are historical outliers. And if you're the Spurs, historically, the top of the draft is where you found your foundational pieces. We're talking about Tim Duncan. We're talking about David Robinson. We're talking about guys like Sean Elliott. You want one of those guys? You're going to have to go up there and grab them. So you've always built through the draft, and I think you're not going to stop doing that now. You're still a small market team. You had success doing that. You had success doing that even recently. Kawhi Leonard, I know we're not going to talk about him today. He's gone. It's all right. It's a new era of San Antonio Spurs basketball, so fans should be really excited. You need that top, you know, five, six kind of pick, that top five, six prospect in this class, and you're not going to get that unless you're there, right? So I think just in general, for the Spurs to get back to those ways, like we mentioned in the last podcast, right, the Spurs way above all else is winning. That's what it matters. That's what it comes down to here, at, you know, in the two one zero. So I think getting that top six pick, that top five pick, is much more valuable than a playing spot. Thank you to Rob Trejo Jr. for bringing us on. You're going to see this on Spurs too. But if you want to find us, you want to listen to our podcast. That's Alamo City Limits. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, and you can also follow us on social media. Alamo City Limits. There, it's Alamo City Limits everywhere. You can find me on social media. That's n underscore Magaro. You can find Damian, and go ahead and let them know where they can find you. 
yeah, go ahead and just follow me on Twitter, y'all, at D.A. Bartonic. That's at D-A-B-A-R-T-O-N-E-K. Uh, go check us out at Panning the Rock, all the great writers over there. Check out Alamo City Limits. Check us all out, man. SB Nation, we're killing it over there. Yo, you heard Damien. Check us out. Check him out. Check me out. And thank you so much for watching this video. And you'll see a lot more of us on this channel. So tune into all of our new stuff and tune into Spurs Tube as well. Thank y'all. Because it really does depend on what you value. Do you value development through play and experience for KJ, DeJounte Murray, Devin Vassell, Joshua Primo? Or do you think the Spurs still need to kind of get that high draft pick to put us in a spot to be in a playoff race every single year? We're kind of in that spot that Denver was a few years ago, that Memphis was in two, three seasons ago, where they had to drop to the bottom after losing Tony Allen, Zach Randolph, Marc Gasol, Mike Conley. They had to drop to the bottom to get John Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr. Now they made the play in last season. Now they're one of the top teams in the Western Conference. So the Memphis Grizzlies have laid out that roadmap for teams like us in a small market. Now, the question is again, is it DeJounte Murray? Is he one of those pieces? Or are we still trying to acquire that headline talent for the Spurs moving forward? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Go Spurs, go. Make sure to check out SpursTubeTV.com where you can find content, not just from Spurs Tube, but from, from Alamo City Limits Podcast, from SSPN, At The Line, from Spurs and Salsa, and much more. So go ahead and check out SpursTubeTV.com. Boruida.